All right, folks. I'll show you this deer again. Did a video yesterday, <clears throat> and uh, showed you how I mounted up that white tail. Some of the, some of the steps I was doing. She's up and done now. She's drying. Still really wet. Like I said, I just sewed it up. Hell, it was four this morning before I got it done. So the skin's still soft. You can still move it around. But got the mouth all pinned up so it doesn't pull out when it dries. These hides really shrink, shrink up a little bit when they dry. And these the lips, the inside of the lips that you turn inside out will pull out when they dry. That's why I got this carding on here and that paper towel stuffed in the ear to hold the skin tight to the liner while the glue dries. <clears throat> These pins will hold the mouth in until it all sets. At least two weeks. I got some pins right here sunk in. There's some indentions right there in the form. You can see them right in here. That will hold the skin tight until it dries. Then I'll pull those pins out. Uh, got a couple pins buried in here. To hold that tight. This is a Illinois bow or a late season gun kill, so the hair is pretty thick. Them pins are hidden by the hair, so I'll just leave those in. Got obviously I got some uh, cardboard here, some carding, pushing the uh, skin into the uh, muscle lines until it dries. And as as these dry, the moisture always wicks to the bottom to the brisket. This will be the last part that dries, so. Uh, I'm going to let it air out for a few days, probably close to uh, a week. And when I, when I feel this hair, if this down in here starts to pull, I'll put some uh, cardboard there and put the pins in that to hold those tight. But uh, the brisket line is all really nice right along that leg line. Those turned out real nice. Got the eyes pinned, tear ducts pinned, so they don't you can put a little uh, compound in there, some epoxy, if it pulls apart and leaves a gap. But try to keep them tight if I can. Push on them every few hours while I'm out here every couple days. And try to keep them tight, then you don't have to do anything with them. I like to uh, fluff up this hair on the top here. Gives them a more natural look. I've groom, been combing and grooming the rest of it, but I always like to tease up that top hair. Little red pad they got on top of their heads, but she's a drying. I got to still got to fix that tie on the back. That'll come later once the everything starts to set up and dry. I just want to leave it be for a couple of weeks and let it dry for now. I had some car uh, paper towel stuffed in the nose to hold it tight, but uh, about every other day I pull it out so it can get air and dry. Uh, tonight before I go in, I'll put some more in there to hold it tight, but I've let it air out today, and then tomorrow I'll probably pull the ears out, pull the towels out of the ears and let them get some air. I used to use clay to build the ear butts, um, but I use those plastic ones. If you see, looked at that other video, I use them plastic preform ones now. Uh, the ear butts used to take several days to dry for the clay and everything to dry out in the hide. But those plastic ones now they set up pretty quick. A couple days those ears will be locked because um, it's top of the heads. So everything dries down, so they'll be the first first things to be setting up pretty good, um, and then the nose area. But um, I got some thread tied around the ears right now just to make sure they don't drop. Keep them up there tight. Still got my card carding and the clips on the ears to hold them. Probably leave that on there for about two days until that. Uh, basically, it's it's just basically uh, like floor tile adhesive that I use. Um, when I was ordering it from the taxidermy catalogs, it was coming. It was basically just a repackaged. That's what it was. Um, I got this stuff. One of the hardware stores was closing. This was eight bucks a quart. And uh, it was 50% off, so I got it for four bucks a quart. So I bought like three of them. It'll last me for hell, probably a couple years. Um, 
but I usually use uh, find the stuff that's mold resistant. This stuff doesn't sell hardly. It's it's worked. I worked. I used I already used one quart, but. Uh, Cheap enough and it works. Just gotta wash it to make sure it doesn't pull loose when the skin dries in the ear. But I think that turned out pretty nice. I'll update the video later when it starts drying out and uh do all the detail work. It's got to be airbrushed around the eyes and the nose. A little painting to do on it. <clears throat> I've got a uh, tool I use on the nose of these things. You rub some epoxy on the nose and there's a little roller that puts these dimples in it. Gives it a good texture. that guy's pretty happy. Like I said, it was last year's and I kind of got behind on stuff. Had some issues, life issues that went on. He was kind of freaking out. Kept texting the guy that referred him to me, a friend of mine, that's his, referred him to me and uh, he, I guess he texted me this morning again, where's my deer, where's my deer, freaking out. He's going to sell my antlers, man. I want my deer. Get my deer. So I, he come down today. I said, yeah, I got it done. So he's like, you know how to take pictures on these smartphones? He's got a smartphone, but he's obviously not very smart. So I said, yeah, give it here. So we, I figured it out, took a picture of it, and sent it to that guy. I said, deer's done, buddy. A couple, three weeks. Don't sweat. Hopefully uh, I get paid when it's dry and done. Last two guys freaked out too. Like, got that deer done yet? Got that deer done yet? I get it done. And uh, last, the first guy took six months to come and get it. And this other guy's been since about Christmas. So everybody's freaking out. They always want it done quick until it's time to fork out some bills, and then they don't want to pay for it. But I already got. That's the hide for that one there in that middle. That's next. And I got a ram to do for my uncle. A wild boar to do for my uncle. Shot him over Thanksgiving uh, last year. I just did a video. So he gave me some of them, some of that meat from that boar and that ram. I ended up the ram ended up being the tenderloins. And I'll tell you what, wow, that stuff was good. Uh, he obviously had no clue because he gave me the tenderloins. That's like the one thing you don't ever give away is the tenderloins. <laughs> the ones that are inside, they're not the backstrap loin, but the inside tenderloins that are uh, along the inside of the back down toward the hips, back hips. Best part of the, and that's the best part of any animal. That's that's where the filet mignon comes out of the cow. So when you give those away, <laughs> you got more money than brains, I guess go hunt for them and give away the best part. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that's the, the boar head that I'll be mounting later. I'll probably do some videos on that. I've never done one before, so. And this was like 350 pounds. It's huge. So that'll be an interesting video. I know the ribs I ate there tonight was pretty good. Made some jerky out of it and sent it to a few of my YouTube friends. They seem to enjoy it. But, there she is, folks. I so said I'll do a video a couple weeks when she dries out. And get some of the pins out of her. Pin, old pin head here. But I think that one's going to turn out pretty nice. That's a, good, that's a really good form. got a lot of muscle detail in it. Uh, this, this one here doesn't have a lot of muscle detail, but it's got a hell of a swell. That was a monster. I mean, it's not really a huge rack, but man, that that deer came in here. Its friggin' neck was—I mean, it was a monster. 
It's probably close to a 300 pound animal. All right, folks. Catfish redneck doing a little change up here, doing something different. Look at the hey, look at these eggs I picked up today. <coughs> probably don't see anything any strange. This one here is the smallest. That's about like a medium, I guess, store bought egg. Look at the size of this one, folks. Look at that. That almost fills my whole palm. Look at that compared to that egg. <laughs> that is like a freak. That's probably got a double yolk in it. That's about the normal size I've been getting lately. That's pretty small. I haven't got any browns yet this spring at all. That one's kind of a small one, too. I just got my uh, hens back on some uh, oyster shell and layer feed. Didn't really feed it to them much late in the fall and winter. Just couldn't afford the $15 bags. I was feeding them goat food and buddies bring me corn from the elevator. But uh, they're laying again now. I've been having eggs for breakfast. So, uh, man, that is a monster. Look at that egg. <laughs> That'd make a hell of an egg McMuffin, wouldn't it?